tonight on Nightline, a special edition, The Immigration Wars, boiling today as hundreds of thousands of immigrants and their supporters walk off the job and onto the streets for a massive show of force. We have live reports from the city at the epicenter of the protests, from the small town where the protesters made history, and from one protest that got out of hand, the explosion over immigration. Passion stirred, tempers flaring, all over the question of who gets to live and work in America. From the global resources of ABC News, with Terry Moran in Los Angeles, Martin Bashir, and Cynthia McFadden in Times Square, New York, this is Nightline, May 1st, 2006. Good evening from Los Angeles. I'm Terry Moran. Today, this city saw a demonstration of epic proportions, a peaceful army of protesters marching through the city streets. They're just cleaning up after them behind me right now. It was a massive show of strength from Southern California's immigrant community, angered by proposed legislation in Congress that would make every illegal immigrant a felon. More on L.A. in a moment. But this was a national day of protest by immigrants and their supporters. About 400,000 people protested in Chicago, where marchers gathered in a downtown park for one of the biggest events of the day. In Philadelphia today, huge crowds converged on the Liberty Bell. In Milwaukee, a massive march on the shores of Lake Michigan. And these are merely a few examples of the giant flex of immigrant muscle today. Well, one of the biggest events, as we said, was right here in Los Angeles, where an economy that's fueled by immigrants nearly ground to a halt. This is what the shop floor at the American Apparel Garment Factory in downtown Los Angeles usually looks like. 3,000 workers make upwards of 200,000 T-shirts and other items a day here. It's now the largest garment factory in the United States. This morning, the place was deserted. CEO Dove Charney gave his employees, 90% of them Hispanic, the day off in solidarity with the protests. Well, I didn't want my workers to have to decide between their loyalty to the, uh, to the corporation and their loyalty to a political cause. Hundreds of thousands of workers, their families and supporters took over this city streets today in a massive demonstration of sheer numerical power. It was breathtaking. And across L.A. today, the impact of what was billed as the great American boycott was dramatic. The city's wholesale flower market was almost empty. Only a few workers showed up, some under pressure. Uh, we could go, everybody told us that if we don't show up today, we but it started looking for another job. Thousands of businesses were shut. Roads downtown were blocked off, but traffic in this famously congested city was light today, as many commuters heeded official warnings and stayed home. And 72,000 students, 27% of the city total, were absent from school. Early this afternoon, City Hall was ground zero. <laughs> Around noon, the first of today's two planned marches converged on the Art Deco building made famous in so many Hollywood movies. Well, here on the steps of City Hall, it might look like this place is under siege, but if it is, it's a happy kind of a siege. This is a crowd filled with families, with music, very celebratory atmosphere. It is, despite its massive size, a peaceful crowd, a crowd that is in the classic tradition of great nonviolent American protests. Inside at the city's emergency operations center, deep underground, Mayor Antonio Villaraigosa was briefed on what was happening on the streets. We spent some time with him as he struggled to stay on top of the fast-moving events. Very busy day, but you know, as I said from the beginning, our expectation is always this is going to be a, going to be a peaceful a march. Uh, still don't have a handle on the numbers uh, because obviously uh, the day's not finished yet, but. Uh, where, where's your biggest concern about disruption or... Probably the traffic, frankly. This is in the Midtown area. This is where the demonstration will begin. Uh, it will, the second demonstration will begin. It will start... As he looked over his city through some of the 280 traffic cameras stationed throughout Los Angeles, Villaraigosa made clear city authorities would brook no trouble. 
Are you concerned at all that there might be people who want to make trouble in the middle of this? No, I I'm not. That's always a possibility, and I'll tell you something. We will be ready for it. But in the vast sea of people outside, there was no sign of trouble. And for Villaraigosa, that can only come as a relief. He's seen by many Democrats as a future star of the National Party. But the emotional immigration debate is politically hazardous for him. Many immigrant Hispanics want the mayor, a Mexican-American himself, to champion their cause. Many other voters insist he enforce the laws. Do you feel any divided loyalties at all between those members of, of the community who want you to be stronger, who want you to be singing the national anthem in Spanish and flying the Mexican flag or, or whatever, and some of your constituents who get angry when they see that? I learned a long time ago to go with your convictions, with your heart, uh, with what you think is right and wrong. Uh, I was born here. Uh, you know, it, this country's given me so much. Uh, I don't have any divided loyalties. Uh, my loyalty is first and foremost uh, to uh, my faith, uh, my family, uh, and uh, my country, the United States of America. In a sign of just how tricky this issue is for him, Villaraigosa considered leaving Los Angeles today to go to Dallas and lobby the National Football League to put a team here. He changed his mind, but he also says he has no idea of the size of the city's underground population. How many undocumented workers, illegal aliens, whatever you want to call them, are in your city right now? I have no idea. Uh, I know that there are a lot. There are probably more here in this city than any other city in the nation. A million? Um, wouldn't know, wouldn't know. Uh, I've heard estimates uh, from uh, as low as 100,000 uh, to substantially more, maybe up to a million. So you've got a lot of people on the streets of your city today, a lot. You can hear them right outside this window here. What statement does it make about Los Angeles? Well, 46 percent of the city is foreign-born. Uh, we speak 130 languages. There are some 30 different nationalities that have their largest population here outside of their country of origin. Uh, there's a great deal of sympathy in this city for hardworking uh, immigrants. And it was sympathy, simple human solidarity, more than any specific political proposal that seemed to drive these protesters today. You hear all kinds of opinions in this crowd. You've got the Declaration of Independence, you've got labor activists, you have people flying the American flag, the Mexican flag. People here don't agree on any one approach except what they would say is a demand for fair treatment for all immigrants. As the afternoon drew to a close, the crowd swelled even more, and the second march of the day reached its destination along Wilshire Boulevard. The mayor spoke to the throngs in English and Spanish. Afroamericanos, Latinos, Blancos, Judíos, Cristianos. And back on the empty factory floor in American Apparel, Dove Charney, a Canadian-born entrepreneur whose free-spirited company with its notorious ad campaigns and immigrant work staff is a huge American success story, he saw a watershed in the day's events. Um, we're looking at a borderless world. We're not look, we, we cannot tell people, you can't work here, you can't work there. So I think on the long run, we can celebrate immigration and migration. And I think, it's a, I think mob, freedom of mobility is an important thing. It's not around the corner tomorrow, but it's something we have to work towards. We have to have an, o, an open society. I mean, Mr. Gorbachev, tear down that wall. That's one side of the immigration debate, the side that flooded the streets of this city today and nearly brought it to a halt. And now for more of our special edition of Nightline on the immigration wars, we go to my co-anchor Cynthia McFadden with the news about what happened today in New York. It wasn't pretty, Cynthia. Good evening, Terry. You're right. Our special edition of Nightline continues in just a moment on the front lines of a protest that suddenly got ugly here in New York City. And shutting down the town, we go to the Midwest, where factories are feeling the fallout from the walkout. ABC News Nightline. Nightline continues from Times Square with Cynthia McFadden. We continue now with our special edition of Nightline on the immigration wars. The latest estimates are that well over a million people nationwide took to the streets today as part of the so-called Day Without Immigrants protest. The boycott was organized as a political message to show the depth of economic clout the immigration community possesses. So what's the message when the demonstration 
gets out of hand. ABC's Dan Harris reports from a massive rally here in New York. This demonstration in a largely Latino neighborhood began calmly enough with people waving flags and chanting from the safety of the sidewalk. But then we noticed police officers sprinting. The crowd had spilled out into the traffic, bringing everything to a halt. The police were outraged, but their cries went unheeded. Everybody on They were left shaking their heads amidst a suddenly swollen and screaming crowd. It was so loud, a microphone could barely pick up my voice. After about a half hour, the cheerfully disobedient crowd was subdued without arrest. America, God bless America. There were some moments here where this protest was not orderly. There may be some people who watch that and say, these people want to be part of our country. They should follow the laws. Well, if you look back in history, I don't think a lot of people who wanted things done ever followed the rules. If you look at the civil rights movement, nobody followed rules. If you look at everything people did, just in general, if you want something to happen, you have to make yourself be heard and see. Public perception was a big concern today among immigrants and their supporters. Some think a boycott could backfire. We feel that the people that are supporting us will not support us no more because they feel that we're hurting them. They have nothing to do with this. Some people in the immigrant community have said skipping work sends the wrong message. I don't think so. No, no, that would show that uh, we're powerful and that we come here to work. You guys are all high school students? Yes. yes. And you're all skipping school today, obviously. Yes. We need to let them know that we're, we're not going to just give it up without a fight. We're going to do what we came to do to this country. Everyone's here for the same reason. They all want the same American dream. What's one day out of your life? One day is nothing. One day to show the world that you could do something, that you want to you wanna mean something to everybody else in this, in this country. There's been a lot of talk that the proposed crackdown on illegal immigrants has awakened a so-called sleeping giant. There is clearly, however, debate about what the right next steps are for this giant. We Americans, we're not leaving. This is Dan Harris for Nightline in New York. The loud protests here in New York. When we come back, it's not just the big cities, the fallout from the walkout in middle America. In addition to the massive protest marches today in Los Angeles and New York, a tally of a few other cities revealed 15,000 protesters in Houston, 30,000 across Florida, 75,000 in Denver, and 400,000 in Chicago. But immigration issues aren't just big city issues. The immigrant economy is everywhere. And so is the immigration debate. Nightline's Chris Bury reports tonight from Davenport, Iowa. Chris? This bridge over the Mississippi connects the Quad Cities, four smaller cities in Illinois and Iowa. Just a few hours ago, it was the scene of a protest march that shows clearly why the immigration question is just as important here as it is in much bigger cities. This afternoon on the Illinois side of the river, immigrants, nearly all Hispanic and a few Anglo supporters, gathered for the largest demonstration anyone can remember in this placid community where protests of any kind are extraordinarily rare. That said, the march across the Mississippi appeared patriotic, peaceful, and to the point. Its chief organizer, 26-year-old government worker Greg Aguilar, called it an eye-opener. So we can work with the Senate, with the Congress, say, hey, let's help each other out. Let's work with these immigrants. Let's help legalize them so we don't have to stop the assembly lines, so we don't have to stop the meatpacking plants, so we can work together as citizens and not criminals. 18-year-old Lady Ramirez took the day off from school and work. Like many of the marchers, she is an undocumented immigrant brought here from Mexico as a baby and now living in a legal limbo. I don't know where I'm going to go, but I will know that I'm just going to go up. I am not going to go back home. I will stay here because my future is here. I know nothing else but America. I was brought here when I was young, and I know, I know no other way. I think I'm more fluent in English than I am in Spanish. I mean, I, I, I'm an American. I'm Mexican-American. That's what I am. 
As in so many parts of the country, this region too has seen an enormous increase in the number of recent immigrants. In this county alone, census figures show that between 1990 and 2000, the Hispanic population grew by nearly 60%. The first Latinos arrived to work on the railroads after the Mexican Civil War. Since then, this factory and farm region has taken on a more Latin beat. Hispanics now make up more than 10% of the workforce, the largest minority here. Like their predecessors, the newest immigrants came for better jobs. Like Greg Aguilar, the organizer of today's march, they belong to extended families that reach across generations and beyond the border. My grandfather had been coming over since his mother was coming over in 1916, 1920s. There was a lot of work here for a long time, and people just kept coming for those jobs. Home to the headquarters of John Deere, the giant farm equipment company, the Quad Cities has seen its manufacturing base decline. But the meatpacking industry here depends heavily on immigrant labor, and today this Tyson plant, along with more than a dozen other meatpacking operations in the region, was shut down. The one-day economic impact may be minimal, but the message does matter, according to a Tyson spokesman. We think it's important that we have a comprehensive immigration reform. We are in support of uh, enhanced border uh, control. We uh, are in support of some type of guest worker program. We're in support of a earned, an earned status. Uh, and uh, we think that we need more tools. We, in, in the private uh, employer ranks, we need more tools to ensure that we are hiring authorized workers. Today, some smaller local businesses, like this family-owned landscaping company, lost up to a third of its workers. What kind of increase have you noticed among Hispanic workers here in this area? Vice President Kurt Meyer told us he was not happy about losing a day's worth of labor, but also believed the demonstration served as a wake-up call. I, I'm both ways on it, but I, I feel something needs to come up to actually let all of us know how important these employees are to our country's operation. Some people are not going to show up. They're like, what if I'm on camera and they see me? Then how they, how they got that thing over in Iowa, you know, that yeah, they now I Iowa. you if they arrest you and they find out you don't have papers. Okay. The organizers here, nearly all young and inexperienced at such things, worried about rumors that immigration authorities might move in and crack down. We're not aware. INS is not going to be there. And even if INS is there, they're not going to be there to arrest people. Still, they seem determined to step from the shadows and embrace their day in the sun. Today, few bystanders objected. The passing cars mainly haunt their approval. Over two hours, perhaps 2,000 or so marchers made their way over the Mississippi, past the minor league stadium where the national pastime was in full swing, and celebrated their cause on the Iowa side of the bridge. Their leaders were convinced they had not only crossed the river, but also turned a page in history. This is only the beginning. We're going to see how big of an impact it has. And if it does have a big impact, and the Congress and the Senate doesn't start focusing on these issues, we're going to do it again and again and again until something is resolved. The demonstrations today did not cripple the local economy or shut down the school system. But even here, far from the big cities, the protesters did make a point that the immigrants in this debate are determined not to be taken for granted. Cynthia? Thanks, Chris. The immigration wars in America. When we come back, Terry Moran with a final thought from the Los Angeles on the immigration protests and a look ahead to his exclusive report inside the elite team that can shoot to kill in Iraq from thousands of miles away. A final thought now from here. Whatever you think of the immigration debate, one thing that's striking about these giant protests is how middle class and family oriented they seem think about it they put hundreds of thousands of people on the streets of american cities and with the significant exception of new york there was very little trouble this in a country where when a city wins a sporting championship there are often riots where people get killed it's a testament really to something that's obvious when you walk among these protesters how decent and polite and and well neighborly they are. They are gathering in great numbers to send a message to the government, to you, to me, and do it in a nonviolent, civil fashion.
it all seems very American, for what it's worth. Well, tomorrow on Nightline, Hellfire... Elizabeth Vargas, tonight the nation's illegal immigrants try to show America.